I'm going to talk to you uh, about a flagship uh, education program. Uh, NASA is funding, uh, this year funded uh, jointly through the NASA Heliophysics and Planetary Science Divisions called Sun Earth Day. Sun Earth Day is uh, about 11 years old. Uh, it was developed originally to get people interested in heliophysics. Imagine how hard that is. Um, but it's been uh, quite successful and uh, we choose a diff different theme each year and for 2012, of course, our theme uh, centers around uh, the transit of Venus. So just to uh, get you oriented, here's the transit of Venus as we saw it in 2004. Venus um, uh, subtends uh, about 1 30th the diameter of the sun, 1 900th or so the uh, uh, area. It's a pretty picture. Uh, the trace spacecraft observed uh, the Venus transit in 2004 and we'll have uh, Solar Dynamics Explorer uh, observing it for the 2012 apparition. And here's uh, an image uh, from the U.S. Naval Observatory, uh, which is really a, a, a projected image onto a, a big piece of paper showing the 1882 transit of Venus. So, a uh, little historical content. Um, Jeremiah Horrocks was the first to observe a transit of Venus in 1639, and he observed it because he uh, modified uh, Johannes Kepler's uh, Rodelphine uh, tables. Uh, which uh, assumed that the observer would be at the center of the Earth. Of course, it's not. And so when uh, Horrocks uh, uh, modified uh, those calculations, he was able to predict uh, the 1639 transit, and he actually was, uh, made some observations. Transit uh, was quickly realized was important, not only because they could kind of get a general sense of the size of Venus, right, as you see the disk against the sun, but much more importantly because it led astronomers to the holy grail of astronomy at the time, which was the, the distance from Earth to the sun, the, the astronomical unit. All they knew was relative distances at the time. Once they could measure one distance accurately, and I'll show you how it's done, um, then uh, they could have the distances to all the planets. So here's what's happening uh, with the geometry. Uh, Venus is an interior planet. Its uh, orbit is tilted about three degrees to the ecliptic. So as um, uh, Venus and Earth go around the sun with an eight to five uh, resonance, uh, Earth goes around um, five, uh, five times as Venus goes around eight, they'll uh, come close to each other again in their orbits, but only when they do so along this line of nodes can there be a transit of Venus. So this happens twice, separated by eight years, every 105 to 120 years. So the, this one in 2012 is the last, probably, in your lifetime. Don't miss it. Okay, so here's uh, uh, historical uh, dates, uh, 1631 and 1639, uh, 2004 and 2012, and then if you miss the 2012 transit, it'll be 2117 before the next one occurs from Earth. Here's uh, how you do the math. Uh, it's all based on parallax. Two observers spaced widely on the Earth will see Venus in slightly different locations as its uh, silhouette is projected on the Sun. That angle is actually twice the parallax angle, so you can make a little right triangle here. Once you can make a right triangle, you're home free. You do a little trigonometry, and you can actually get the distance to Venus. You can see here uh, 1769, 1761 transits from different locations on Earth. The actual displacement of Venus is small, and uh, for 2012, uh, we have a, about a 3,500-mile uh, baseline that we have guaranteed. We may be able to expand it. We're going to get about a, a half of a diameter of Venus shift in its image. So uh, in 2004, here's what it looked like. Uh, people in the eastern part of the United States could see the uh, uh, transit in progress uh, as the sun rose. And I got my, uh, my daughters up at some ungodly hour, and we went up to a parking garage and showed about 500 people the transit of Venus. Um, here's the um, geometry across the sun in 2004. And uh, so for our Sun Earth Day uh, program in 2004, we uh, also feature the transit of Venus. We had a, a live webcast from Athens, Greece. Uh, we had a, a series of about 10 observatories from Nova Scotia down to Brazil. Uh, taking pictures of the transit so that uh, amateur astronomers could um, review that and uh, calculate the parallax angle. Uh, we developed a series of uh, Venus transit kits with contributions from NASA planetary science, astrophysics, and heliophysics missions and sent it out to about 30,000 educators. 
Uh, we had an amateur, astronomy, amateur astronomer observing certificate program where we challenged them, take these images, uh, calculate the parallax, derive a distance to the sun, and also, if possible, detect the Venusian atmosphere. We provide a lot of support for scientists. We give them um, information, uh, packets of information and presentations that they can take into schools and public venues. Uh, we um, kind of uh, unearthed the uh, John Philip Sousa Venus Transit March. And we're going to do the same thing for 2012 and have uh, high schools and middle schools play that march. And uh, had uh, just a huge number of local event connections where there were Venus transit parties, star parties, and so on. Uh, here's the um, extent of our baseline in 2004 for the observations and some of the observatories that partnered with us. Here's uh, we're on the top of a parking garage getting uh, uh, people to look at the transit. And then here we are in 2012, the last one of your lifetime. Here's the geometry in 2012 uh, in the United States. You'll see um, uh, Venus in transit as the sun is setting. In most of Europe, you'll see Venus in transit as the sun is rising. Hawaii, it turns out, is a great place to observe this. So we submitted a grant to NASA and said, we want to go to Hawaii. Oh, and we'd like to support the Venus transit. And um, we got funded. Here's the uh, geometry across the sun for 2012. This is a... Um, this is a, a map of uh, predicted visibility. Red here is good. And so uh, here we are over in Hawaii with a fairly red tinge to it. So uh, it will be on Mauna Kea. So hopefully we'll have clear skies and be able to observe this. Uh, Alaska is a little more uh, uh, risky. And so we're having multiple uh, amateur astronomers uh, set up observing posts in Alaska. So hopefully we can get at least one good uh, image. These are some of the uh, times in universal time for the uh, transit, about 2,200 hours for initial ingress. Okay, it's about a six hour transit. Here's our program for 2012. Um, a live webcast from Mauna Kea, teacher packets again, seven pre-taped NASA programs on the history and the science of the transit of Venus. Uh, again, the 1883 uh, uh, John Philip Sousa March, an art contest and an amateur astronomer uh, challenge. Uh, basically, uh, the bottom line is we anticipate from 2004 that will impact roughly 100 million people with this program. There's our observing baseline. Here's Mauna Kea. Um, this is the NASA EDGE uh, group that will be on top of Mauna Kea doing live webcasts. And here's some of our partners' organizations, and I'll stop there.